Hello and welcome to this My Theme Shop video screencast. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you an introduction to caching on your WordPress website using two of the most popular and complete WordPress caching plugins, WP Super Cache and W3 Total Cache. Caching is really important and it's going to make your website run even faster um, by storing a static version of your website and displaying it for visitors so that your server doesn't have to load up the same page each time. It can just create a copy and then serve that to your visitors. Now you're going to have two plugins to choose from, WP Super Cache and W3 Total Cache and the results that you get for each one is going to depend on your hosting. So if you're wondering which one to try, then try out them both and see which one loads your site faster. We need to install these by going to plugins and then clicking add new. And here I'm just going to show you W3 Super Cache first. So I'm just going to do a search here for WP Super Cache. And then here return. And we're going to see we've got WP Super Cache by automatic here. You can just press install now. And um, WordPress is going to download the plugin. And all we need to do now is press activate plugin. And WordPress is going to have that activated. But there are still some setup we need to do. We're going to see here we've got a message saying WP Super Cache is disabled. Please go to the plugin admin page to enable caching. You can either use this link or if you're looking for this menu later on, you can find it under settings and then click WP Super Cache. The first thing to do is to enable caching by turning this on here. You can see it's currently set to off, but we can just click on and then update. And we're going to get the plugin to update that. We're going to have the caching enabled now. Now I'm just going to run you through quickly a couple of the options with the plugin. We're going to see first we have this test cache button. You can, you can use this to test your caching and see whether that's working. And we can see that mythemeshop.com is loading up fine here and all those are set to OK. You also have the option to delete cache. This will clear your cache if you've made any changes and need to force those to show up. You can use this button here just to delete your cache and refresh it. Up the top we've got some options. You can see we're on the easy mode at the moment. If we click on advanced, then we can load up here. You've got some more advanced options here and you're probably going to want to leave most of these with their default set. The recommended options are set to recommended, denoted here in italics. Um, however, if you know what you're doing, you can change these as you wish. You're not going to find that all of the recommended settings are set by default, um, but you can do those just by ticking them here. So we're going to see we can have compression on pages so they serve more quickly to visitors. That's off by default, but you can enable that just by ticking. If you see any adverse effects on your site as a result of having these changes made, you can just come back and untick these once you're done. So I'm just going to tick all of the recommended options here. We can see we've got the cache location here as well. You can change that if you would like. Once you're done, you just need to press update status and we're going to have the plugin save those settings. Now, if we have a look at the bottom, we still got some extra options here. And these again are advanced options. You've got the expiry time and garbage collection. So this is how long each cache should be kept for. And um, you can set that in seconds or have that scheduled in hours. And you can also choose to have email notification for those as well. You can reject certain URLs. For example, um, you might want to have not caching on single posts, pages or front page and so on and so forth. And you can also uh, have some strings here for uh, pages you don't want cached, as well as file names that can be cached even though they meet one of the strings above. So for example, the WordPress comments pop-up uh, is going to meet that requirement. You can make any of these changes here and you'll want to have a read through these just to see what they do. For example, we've got lockdown. If you want to have your site locked down ahead of a traffic spike you're expecting, you can also directly cache files and reset to the default. You're gonna to want to have a careful read through those um, in order to see what you want to change. Next option is a CDN or content delivery network. Now you can use these settings to uh, use a content delivery network to serve static files from your website from servers all across the globe in order to load a page from the server closest to your user. This is great for speeding up your website. A CDN is typically an extra cost that you're going to have to pay on a monthly or yearly basis. But if you have a CDN purchased, then you can use these settings here in order to set that up. Your CDN provider is going to give you details of what to fill in here. Next up is contents. This just shows you what is in the cache at the moment. Here we haven't got anything showing because we've only just set the plugin up. 
Next option is preloading. Here you can create a cache for every single post on your site. So rarely visited posts, including uh, unknown visitors such as bots, will hit a cache page. This will probably help include your Google ranking as they're using the speed metric to test whether to rank sites now. This will create a lot of files though. Um, so you've got some options here on how to set this up. You're gonna find that preload mode is the most popular here and you can enable that just by ticking that box and pressing update. If you want to run the cache now, you can just press this button in order to run that. Final option is plugins. Here we can add WordPress plugins to WP Super Cache. As it says, however, this is strictly an advanced feature only. And you're gonna have knowledge of WordPress and PHP in order to create caching here. So you're most likely going to want to leave this as it is. Just quickly show you the debug. Um, you're unlikely to need to use this, but if you have any problems and need to contact any support teams, and you can enable debugging just by pressing this button here. So that's a quick introduction to WP Super Cache, and if you load up your site, you'll be able to see how quickly it loads. Make a note because we're now gonna have a look at W3 Total Cache, which is an alternative plugin, um, which has much of the same features, but offers just a slightly different approach. Before we install W3 Total Cache, we're going to want to disable WP Super Cache just by going to Plugins and then pressing Deactivate. Now I'm going to add a new plugin and just by doing a search for W3 Total Cache and pressing Return. Again, we're going to find the plugin here and we can say Install Now. As before, WordPress is going to download and install the plugin and we just need to activate it once we're done. And again, as with WP Super Cache, we're gonna see we've got this notification at the top telling us that um, the cache is installed and we have the option to uh, try out new features as soon as they're ready to enable edge mode. Um, you probably want to leave this blank just so you know that features have been tried and tested before you try them. We're gonna hide that message and if we now have a look on the left-hand menu, we're gonna see again we've got this new menu created which is performance. Click on this and you're taken to the W3 Total Cache dashboard. Here we're gonna see that the uh, plugin is enabled automatically and caching is already running. We've got the dashboard here and you can see you've got some uh, support options here that you can purchase as well as some sharing options. We're gonna have a delve straight into the settings though and we can find the general settings on the left hand side and we can click on general settings in order to load that up. You're gonna see you've got a lot of options here, um, both on the general settings page and throughout. And if you want to find out more about how to use all of these in really in depth, you can find a great tutorial on the My Theme Shop website at community.mythemeshop.com forward slash tutorials. And you're gonna find a free video tutorial here, how to make your website load faster using W3 Total Cache. Here we've got a really in-depth introduction to all of those options. I'm just going to give you a quick run through here and um, to start off with you're going to want to enable caching. So we can tick the uh, toggle button here to toggle all modes of caching on or off at once. And we can see here doing that enables page cache as well as minify, uh, the database cache, object cache, browser cache, as well as CDN, uh, and a reverse proxy and monitoring and so on and so forth all the way down the page. Now for each option, you're going to see that you've got, as well as an able bot, you've got a method. Here we can choose uh, the page caching method. On shared hosting, which you're most likely using, you're gonna see that you've got um, a little notice here telling you which one is best. This will be set to the default, but you just might want to check here. So we're gonna see that disk enhanced is best for shared servers. So we want to click on that in order to set that. We've got minify, and again, we're gonna see that we've got disk is best, and so we want to be using that. If you've got a uh, more dedicated hosting or a VPN, for example, then you're going to have more options available to you and you'll be able to uh, ask your hosting about which one is the best to set up here. But it's most likely you're just using shared hosting. W3 Total Cache is going to have the default options set to what the best for shared is. So you just want to go through all of these, enable them and then check the uh, best option here just by running through these. If you've got a CDN, then uh, you can enable this here um, and you've got different options to provide this here. As I mentioned before, this is an extra service though. Um, so if you don't have that purchased, you're going to want to disable that. You can run through all of these, including adding your Google page speed to your WordPress dashboard. And to do that, you can just grab an API code from this link here and paste that in in order to get that displaying on your WordPress dashboard. You've got debugging options as well as an import and export on settings. And once you're done making changes, you just need to save all settings. 
We can see that it's updated successfully and if there are any issues then W3 Total Cache is going to tell you here. If you want to make any changes to your site and have those reflected, you can just press empty the page cache in order to provide a consistent user experience. These options across the top here provide quick access to any of the different sections that we have gone through. And as I mentioned, if you want detailed analysis of what these do and what you should be using, you can check out the tutorial on the My Theme Shop website in order to find that out. But generally, that's a really quick and easy setup for W3 Total Cache. And if you load up your site again, you're going to see what the result is. So in order to compare the two, you can load up your site and test the load times of that. W3 Total Cache does have some extra advanced features um, giving you a bit more control, whereas WP Super Cache is a bit more accessible. So it's up to you which one you choose. They're both excellent plugins. I hope this video has been helpful for you in getting a faster website and thank you very much for watching. Thank you.